Okay, I'm gonna try to walk you through the setup for voice meter banana and VB virtual audio cables uh, in an effort to separate your desktop audio from your Discord audio, from your microphone audio. Uh, we want to have full control over those elements um, and be able to split them as necessary uh, for recording and such. So I'm going to attempt to explain what voice meter banana is actually doing to your computer audio. Um, a lot of resources out there that explain the process of setting this up um, either provide misinformation or don't provide any information about what's actually going on um, and what these what these different things are. Um, it can be a little tricky to set up, especially if you run into any issues, but really the whole setup should not take very long. Like you can you can do this kind of thing in 10 to 15 minutes. It's it's not actually very complicated unless you run into issues, which hopefully we don't with, you know, proper explanation. So let's get started. First, we're going to need to go to vbaudio.com, go to audio apps and in the banana tab, go down to the exe installation file for the latest voice meter banana and we're going to download that and then go back up to virtual audio cable and download the VB cable driver pack for Windows. We're going to run the voice meter pro setup.exe and install. Wait for it to install ing. And once it's done, it'll pop up and say you must reboot your system to finalize installation. I'd recommend doing so and then coming back to the next part. After installing voice meter banana and restarting, extract the VB cable driver pack zip to its own folder and then run the VB cable setup exe. Looks very similar to the voice meter one. And we're gonna do the same thing, install the driver. This might happen. <laughs> In which case you should run the exe as administrator and it'll work and there we go and it'll tell us to reboot our system for this as well which i do recommend so you're going to be restarting two times in quick succession but i think it's worth it to prevent any sort of hang-ups or any problems uh, just just go ahead and restart again All right now that we've restarted again, we can run voice meter banana and I'm going to attempt to explain what we're looking at here. I kind of hoped that it would have reset to all default settings for this program, but it looks like Unfortunately or maybe fortunately it actually retained my settings from when I had it installed before I had uninstalled it <laughs> to try to get default uh, settings here, but uh, it remembered for me, so that's nice. Uh, but still, we can we can explain what's going on here. So, what you'll see here is hardware input one is what this will say by default, and then you have hardware input two, hardware input three, two virtual inputs, uh, voice meter VIO and voice meter AUX. You have your mastering section, three physical, two virtual, and then your uh, hardware out, which is your main speakers. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to A1 here and set it to your whatever your main speakers are. I'm on a laptop right now that's uh, connected to a TV, so my TV speakers, which are connected to a sound bar, that's my primary speakers on this computer. But yours will probably be more simple, like speakers or headphones. Um, so set... A1 to whatever your primary speakers are. So these are your five inputs, and these are your five outputs. Three of them physical, as in like microphone, and two of them virtual uh, that voice meter handles. These down here are your five buses, A1, A2, A3, B1, and B2. Uh, again, the three A's are physical outputs and the two B's are virtual outputs. 
um, A1, as we said before, is connected to our main speakers. So if we turn on A1 in any of these <laughs> uh, inputs, it will activate our speakers for that input. So if I turned on A1 on, say, a microphone uh, hardware input, suddenly I would be able to hear my microphone because I'm telling voice meter banana to turn on the physical output on my speakers for the microphone hardware input that I've set up. Does that kind of make sense? Like, so <laughs> these are inputs, three physical, two virtual. This is your mastering section. As you can see, three physical, two virtual. These are outputs. And then you have your buses, which is telling the inputs what to output, <laughs> where to output, I should say. <laughs> Hopefully that is not confusing or too confusing. I know it was kind of confusing for me because um, it doesn't really tell you this. Stuff. Even in the like the user manual on the voice meter website, it tells you what they are, but you kind of have to know what they do as well to understand them. Uh, so with that being said, let's set this up. So first thing we want to do is make hardware input one our microphone. Uh, so you can set that to whatever your microphone is. Use the uh, WDM interface. It's the, what is it, Windows driver model interface. Um, use, use that one. And then before we do anything else, we have to do some uh, setup elsewhere. So go down to your sound settings. In your sound control panel, under the playback tab, we're going to set the default device here to the cable input, the virtual audio cable input. So set default. Under the recording tab, we're going to set the default device to voice meter aux output and then hit OK. So in here under sound, under output, we're going to choose the virtual audio cable input, cable input, and then under input, we're going to choose voice meter aux output. Uh, you'll understand why we're doing this in just a minute. Now that we're back in voice meter, we're going to set the hardware input to, to cable output, again, WDM. And what that's going to do is route the, <laughs> route the speaker output on your computer, AKA your desktop audio, through the cable input that we set here to the output that we set here. So this hardware input two is going to become our desktop audio input. <laughs> it's kind of, and then um, we can use this A1 here to activate or deactivate the, the, uh, the hardware out to our speakers. So let's like give an example here. If we turn it off and we play something, we will not be able to hear any audio at all. But if we activate A1, We can. So we can hear our desktop audio and control it through this input. Uh, same with our microphone here. Again, if we turned on A1, we could hear ourselves speaking. So next comes the Discord part of the equation. As you can see, we're in the, uh, the voice and video settings for Discord. Under input device, we're going to select voice meter aux output and under output device, we're going to select voice meter aux input, which what that will do is setting the, uh, the voice meter aux input, which is here will allow us to control the discord audio we hear 
on our desktop. So this A1, which is again connected to our speakers, will now control whether or not we hear other people on Discord, any Discord audio. So let me do it and let me play an example. I'm on my phone here connected to myself in a call. So let me unmute my mic on my phone. And suddenly you can hear me through my desktop audio. But now you can't because I turned off A1. And now you can again. Also, because we selected the voice meter aux output as our input device, uh, we can control that too by sending the microphone to uh, the B buses, which are over here. So to be clear, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I said this before, but I'm too lazy to go back. To be clear, these buses are connected to the mastering section over here, as you can see, A1, A2, A3, B1, and B2. And they tell you what they are. They're physical and virtual. So we're sending the microphone audio that's coming in to the virtual buses. Um, I'm not sure. I forget why we're sending. Why am I sending it to both? Does that matter? Here, one sec. But I, I should be able to hear myself through my phone now, which I can. If I turn off B1, it's still coming through. If I turn off B2, is it still coming through? It is not coming through. Okay, so just, just select B2. And then you can use the B2 virtual uh, mastering column to uh, change your gain audio if you need to or whatever else so you're connecting hold on you're connecting your microphone to the b2 bus all right which is connected through discord cool all right <laughs> that makes sense all right I should also mention that your desktop audio can now be controlled through this gain slider because this is your A1 gain, which, as you remember, is connected to your speakers. Uh, but that's only your local volume, your local gain. It will not affect whatever is actually, the, like the signal that is actually coming through your, your uh, output, I guess. So... That will control, this will control the gain locally for you, what you're hearing. But say if you're recording your desktop audio, it will not control that gain, which is actually kind of nice. <laughs> you want, you pretty much want that. And yeah, since this is the, uh, the voice meter aux input that we set as the, uh, the Discord output device, this A1 will control whether or not we hear Discord audio. Did I already say that? Furthermore, if you wanted to, let's say, pipe your desktop audio into Discord to let others hear it, you would enable the B2 virtual output for your hardware input to here, your cable output, because as you remember, in Discord, we set voice meter aux output as your input device. So now that's going through the B2 virtual output, uh, which goes into your Discord. So the, the basically the way this is <laughs> this is working is your we have connected a virtual cable to the desktop audio, to your desktop audio. Uh, so the desktop audio is going in to the cable input coming out of the cable output as the second input in voice meter, which we can then hear. Then further, we are sending the input <laughs> to Discord as an output 
for your input device. So the 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 audio is going in from the the virtual cable output into Discord, and then coming out as an output. You get you, does that does that track? I can't even tell anymore. There's so many inputs and outputs. It's really not that much. It just feels complicated because I guess because the naming schemes aren't that distinct. It'd probably be easier to like rename some stuff to make it uh, a little bit easier on the mind. But you know, as I, I think, as long as you understand the principles of what's happening, you can have greater control over your audio. But basically, that's it. I mean, I don't think there's anything else you really have to know to be able to control whether or not you're hearing your desktop audio, your Discord audio at any given time, you know, and whether other people can hear whatever, like your mic or your desktop audio. Uh, so for recording purposes, I think that will do it. Hopefully you weren't uh, thrown off by <laughs> me forgetting things and uh, trying to re-explain it to myself in my own head because uh, it can be confusing. But hopefully this lessened the confusion for you. And hopefully you can set this up pretty easily. Good luck. Oh yeah, uh, addendum. I should probably tell you how to activate these separated audio channels in OBS in case you want to record. So if you go to settings, output, the recording tab, Enable a second audio track. Usually you only have one by default, but enable a second. Apply and OK. Then you'll see your microphone and two desktop audios. Go to the properties of the first one and set it to cable input, which if you recall is the desktop audio output that we chose in our sound settings in Windows. Okay. For desktop audio 2, go to properties, set that to voice meter aux input, which, if you recall, in Discord, that is our output for Discord sound, aka people's voices. So now, hit OK. So now this first desktop audio controls our actual desktop audio, not our Discord audio. And desktop audio 2 controls our Discord audio, not our desktop audio. So when you're recording and you do not want Discord audio in your recording, just mute it. In fact, you can rename Let's see, Discord audio. So now we see des desktop audio, Discord audio. Very simple. Just mute it if you don't want it. There you go. And obviously, you can either choose to record your mic or mute it for your recordings. Now you have control over all these elements. It's, it's, it's really cool. Again, good luck in setting everything up. And I hope you are uh, able to get recording the way you want to.